Father, thank you for this time we've had together. The worship has been awesome today. Thank you for your abiding presence. We pray that you will clear our minds and our hearts that we might receive this word, that it will go into good soil and that great and marvelous things will happen in the days to come, that your manifest presence be so evident that each of us know that it was only by your hand that these things were done. We lift up uh, Sister Johns this morning and knowing that her husband has been rushed to the hospital and not able to get a pulse, but you are able to make the heart beat. The word says you sent your word and healed them. And so gracious master, we send your word now to write wherever he is, to do what needs to be done, but we ask you to calm and comfort and give her the peace she needs as she goes through this time. In the name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. At that name, everything that has a name has to bow. There's no other name like that name because there's nobody greater thank you so much for allowing us to partner with you and living in that name and all the people of God said amen, amen. praise the Lord let's give our, our, our praise team a good hand and <laughs> our band a good hand this morning and our dancers now, young Poseidon, he did a wonderful job, didn't he? I'll tell you, the Lord is good, isn't he? It's good to be in the house of worship once again. And I thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity to share the word of God with you on this second Sunday in this new year, 2014. I'll tell you, God is doing some great and marvelous and awesome things, and he's going to be doing some even greater things in the lives of those of us who believe him and take him at his word. Today I'd like to share with you just for a few minutes, if you don't mind, uh, an Old Testament passage. Matter of fact, I want to put two pieces together. Um, uh, Psalm 90, uh, verses 1 to maybe about 13, and I, I want to take a, a peek over in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 7, uh, and I'm looking at uh, verses 24 to 27 there and it is my prayer that you will get this today and um, and uh, uh, hopefully we will uh, be at the same place at the same time at the end of this message because I want you to understand that every person in this room has to make God first and while I open this up to you underneath that uh, Maybe what we can talk about is uh, the law of first things uh, and uh, see if we can just be reminded uh, of what the Lord expects of us as believers and those who are not believers yet will come to understand what he is he wants to do in their lives. On your feet with your Bible in your hand, um, uh, Psalm 90. I'm reading out of the King James Version of it. And this is a psalm that you know that this is the prayer of Moses. And uh, so we're going to take some things out of it uh, so that we can, as we start this uh, new journey, this new year, and see what the Lord says to us as we become passionate about what he's going to be doing in the days to come. Psalm 90, beginning at verse 1. Let's read it, and it's probably on the on the, on the screen. So let's read it together, uh, beginning at verse 1. Everybody, together. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. 
for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is passed as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. That's good enough right there. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, uh, making God first. Now, I know that we think about that all the time, and most of us in this room will say, I already do that. Well, let's see. And then uh, underneath that, I want to really talk about uh, um, the law of first things. And I'll, I'll get back to you on Matthew. We'll get that as we go by. Is that all right? Uh, let's have a seat in, in the presence of the Lord. Um, uh, I think that he wants to do some great and marvelous things in our lives. Listen, beloveds, uh, as we, as we uh, begin to take this journey into this new year, this 2014 year, uh, we need the, the perspective, Moses, the man of God, who, who wrote this powerful and timely psalm, and he's written it in prayer form. Uh, uh, so that I don't have to go down every verse, understand what he says. Uh, Moses saw time in three dimensions. Number one, he saw from everlasting to everlasting, verse one and two. He saw a year to year, uh, verses thir three to verse 12. He saw uh, day to day, verses 13 to verse, verse 17. Uh, uh, Moses recognized that life uh, was from three positions. And, uh, and as he does that, uh, they're, they're, I'd like to uh, raise those positions up to you. Number one position is this, and if you're writing, uh, he writes it from uh, an approach like this, an uh, uh, appropriate description of who God is. He says there, Lord, you have been our dwelling place, our refuge in all generations. I mean, he's been right there in whatever the generations are, and I believe that a generation of about 20 years, but, but and most of us and many of us in this room have gone through more than one generation, but he's been our refuge in that. He's been right there. You have been our dwelling place, our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains were even born, or thou didst even give birth to the earth, and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. There are no other gods like him. And our children just give me finished singing. Uh, there's nobody greater than he. Uh, there, uh, he. He's never had a beginning, nor would he ever have an ending. He's always been. And so Moses in his prayer gives this, this appropriate a description of who God is, but not only of who God is, but who he is in the believer's life. You've been our refuge. You've been our dwelling place in every generation. You have been from everlasting to everlasting, and whether we make you first, you are. God is first. Uh, I want you to know to, uh, uh, that this particular definition in verses 1 and 2 is simply uh, that it describes this, the, the infinitude of God. He's first. Not only is he first, but he's the rock. Not only is he the rock, but he is the foundation. He is from everlasting to 
everlasting. He is God. Then uh, uh, the other perspective that uh, Moses in his prayer time prays, he prays our times in this earth realm are temporary. In other words, we're not going to be here long. If you were here 150 years, it's temporary in light of the infinitude of God. So no matter how long we've been here, in light of God, it's a short time. James says it another way. He says our lives are like a vapor. And those of us who don't always use the microwave but need some uh, uh, hot water can put a kettle on the stove and when the water gets hot, the steam comes up and before it gets too high, it's gone. That's how our lives are. We only have a short time in which to live in this earth realm. This earth realm, Moses prays, our time is temporary. Thou dost turn man to destruction and says, return to me. One of these days, you and I are going to have to go back to him. I don't know how you feel about that, but while I'm here, I need to realize that my time here is temporary. And, and as I'm standing here and you're sitting there, uh, my time is ticking on. And, and as I, I stand and talk, uh, I'm dying as I talk. And one of these days, I'm going to come to the end of it in the earth realm. And when I talk about the earth realm, I'm only talking about while I'm at home in this body because time works on this body. But while I'm here, I need to recognize that whatever time I have left, is temporary. Our times in this earth realm is temporary and we should value each year as an opportunity to serve. And if you're writing down, uh, because he is from everlasting to everlasting and because my time here is limited, I need to recognize that every year I have, I need to recognize it as an opportunity to serve him. Not only should I uh, value uh, my opportunities, and of course, you know, sometimes if we don't uh, go when the opportunity knocks, we miss a great opportunity to serve him. And when you really value and understand how valuable your time is in the earth realm, you won't miss opportunities. And this year is a great opportunity to see an uh, opportunity to serve him in the beauty of holiness. We should also value each day as a new mercy. Uh, we ought to wake up every day thanking him for another opportunity. New mercies I see. Morning by morning, a new mercy I see. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to me. So I need to value every moment that I have in this, and it's a new mercy because if justice had a way, I would have been cut down in my sleep. But God, allowed me to enjoy a new mercy so I ought to value this as an opportunity to serve him in a new way. Uh, we should not only value uh, our time, but we ought to value our time with him to serve. We ought to value the fact that God and his presence here ought to give us wisdom in our hearts. In other words, when I value this as a, a new opportunity, I value and see the mercy of God. I ought to ask God to understand and know that I value so much that God and his, this, and, and his presence with me should make my heart have a new kind of wisdom. I want to know how to serve and value him with a heart that's full of wisdom. Wisdom is a major thing. This wisdom is not necessarily uh, uh, Sophia. This wisdom is skill for living. Because if I really value him and I really value how much mercy he's put in my life, how much grace he's given me, I won't take for granted that he ought to do it. It ought to give me such a joy and such an excitement become before him that it develops in my heart a wisdom to grow and develop and to be more like him. We should value our time to serve and God in his presence will cause our hearts to be ignited with wisdom, skill 
for living. Since I know I only have a short time here, whatever amount of time that is, I need to have skill for living. Listen to verse 11. Verse 11 says, who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. I asked myself as I looked at that particular verse, I, I, I kind of pondered it a bit. And so I, I come up with this. A, a, a better question is this. Who worthily connects this brevity of life with your recognition of sin and choices and, your, and his righteous wrath and judgment? Do we value, not only do we worthily connect the fact that I don't have long here when I think about what I'm getting ready to do, what my choices are like, uh, how he views sin, how his righteous indignations come into my life when I don't obey him and do the things that he requires of my life. Do I connect that properly? Because I, don't know, I, because I know I don't have a long time to stay here. Am I making any sense? That's question number one. I got another, a, a B question. A B question is this, is this, who worthily connects the brevity of life with the reverence and the worship of fear that he is due? Sometimes I, I think about this as I go along. We, uh, in these last days, we, 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 we take him so lightly. Uh, we've gone away from the awesome holiness and the righteousness of God. I'm reading this book right now about the fact that we've got holes in our holiness. We just think God is just going to uh, be our, 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 our Easter bunny, our, 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 our Santa Claus, and we just take him so for granted. We are so lackadaisical in our worship, but we don't realize that every time we wake up, there's another opportunity to worship him and to recognize his reverence and to really worship him in the beauty of holiness to realize how awesome he is, how holy he is, and he's allowed us to partner with him in one more day. Do we worthily connect that brevity of life? There may be a day when you wish you had the opportunity to worship and reverence him. I don't know whether you feel about it like I do, but the older I get, the more I realize how good and wonderful he is. The older I get, the more I realize how holy and righteous he is, how he's worthy of my praise. Regardless of what's going on in me, he deserves all of my praise. And I thank him for every opportunity to give him praise because of who he is. Do, do we worthily connect it the brevity of life. And of course, we've got some young folks in here who don't really think about that too much because they think they've got a long time to go. But let me tell you, the word of God says, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. And if you learn how to reverence him early, you won't have a hard time when you get older. Uh, nobody will have to pump you up to do it. And, and not only that, but uh, you might not like what I'm getting ready to say, but when you really start to love him, you take every moment as precious and you're not in a hurry to get away from him. You reverence his presence. You want to be in his presence. It's not just a song. It's a lifestyle. It takes time to build character and I want to be in his presence. Oh, I feel like I want to preach here. Do you know what I mean? Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Do, do we worthily recognize the brevity of life and connect that with the awesome reverence and worship that is due his name because we're not going to live here long. So, so, so Moses in this prayer, and as I hurry along, he says, uh, with all of what I just said, he says, so teach me. <laughs> teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart to wisdom. Let me say it another way. Since I've said all of that, uh, you everlasting, everlasting, you've been my refuge and I realize I don't have long to be here. So I want you to teach me. Teach me to number my days. Teach me that I may present to you a heart of wisdom. Teach me 
so that I can live skillfully in this world that's fallen to worship you and to let the world that's unknown to you to see what a child of God lives, looks like, and walks like in a fallen world with a brevity of life. Teach me to number my days that I might present to you a heart full of wisdom. If what we need, what we need most even in this last day is a heart of wisdom. Teach us, instruct us, instruct our hearts so that we can grow in wisdom, skillful living. Make us know so that we may be wise and grow a wise heart. Oh, teach us to live well and teach us to live wisely and well. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit to teach you how to live and to live well. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom, skill for living. Teach me what I couldn't get on my own. And of course, you know the Lord has all kinds of ways to teach you. Sometimes he'll let you get in a situation because you won't learn any other way. Sometimes God's gotta do a show and tell. He got to let you get there so he can show you and tell you what you need to do. Teach me so I can number my days. I really want skill for living. In order for you to teach me, I got to make sure that you are first in my life. Help me to understand what lordship means. You are the ruler of my life. You are the ruler of everything that goes on in my life. Do I have any help in here? I'm talking about, I'm talking about the law of first things for 2014. Teach me how to walk it out in 2014. Help me to learn from 2013 that I won't do the same stupid things I did then. Give me a heart of wisdom so I can live well, so I can live wisely. So I ask myself, I ask myself uh, uh, that the Lord uh, uh, teach me what, what, what lordship means. Teach me that it is impossible for any or anyone or anything to replace you. That no matter what goes on in this year, nobody and nothing can replace you. You are my refuge. You are my dwelling place. You gotta be first in my life. And once I understand lordship, Everything else pales in light of your lordship. I asked myself and I asked myself, what is first? What does it mean? What does it mean? What does first mean? I, I went to, to, to the dictionary and found out what first means. Uh, first, one aspect of, of the definition of first is this. Uh, that first means number one. <laughs> yeah, that's simple, isn't it? Uh, he is number one. I'm going to try that one more time. Y'all not paying any attention. I say he is. Number one. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I say he is number one. I, 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 I say I understand what, what first is. First, he is number one. He's number one. But, but you know, I expanded on that definition of first. Uh, he, it means number one, but it, it, it does not mean that it is an island in, uh, unto itself having no effect on all that comes after. He's number one. But instead, it is defined as the beginning or the foundational principle. In other words, he's number one in rank of everything else that comes along. Are oh, you hearing what I say? You ought to tell your say, neighbor, he's number one. I don't, do you really believe he's number one? He's the foundation. He's first. He's the rock. He, he, he's the foundational piece. He's the principle that I have to first be in. He is number one. In other words, he's first in rank. Yeah, I know you got a wife, you got a husband, and they supposed to be number one, they got to be number two. Yeah, I know you got children and all that, they got to be number three. And sometimes uh, your number two and your number three drop down to zero, and you got to put them back up to number three and number two. But he's number 10 all the time. So I ask myself, in other words, uh, uh, he is the foundation. He must always come first. 
He is number one. I don't know, I'm in a quiet house here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's first. Yeah, he ranks first. He's the beginning of everything. As a matter of fact, he says so, I'm the first and the last. Yeah, and he's everything in between. If you really love him, Lord have mercy. So teach me to number my days and recognize that you are number one. Listen to what Jesus says, and, I, and you may not be, have time to get there, uh, but uh, in, in Luke chapter 6, verse 46 and 47, it says this. He says this, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? The next verse says something like this. Everyone who comes to me and, watch this, hears my word. and acts on them, I will show you whom he's like. Where did I come up with that? Teach me to number my days. And you know he still speaks. He's speaking to us through his word. Luke says, uh, uh, why do you call me Lord, a uh, Lord, and not do the things I say? He says, and everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show, these are the words of Jesus. He says, I will show you whom he is like. My, my, the, for 2012, I'm asking him to teach me. And how's he going to teach me? He's going to teach me through his words. Hmm. So Luke 6, 20. Luke, Luke 6, 46 and 47 says, uh, no need in calling me Lord if you're not going to do what I say. Because if you're going to call me Lord and you're going to come to me, you're going to hear my words. And in my words, I will instruct you. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And, and if you love me, my father will love you. And if my father loves you, he'll love you because you love me. And if you got the commandments and just simply do my commandments and keep them, I will manifest myself to you because you have uh, been taught what I said. You got it. You didn't just hear the word. You did it. Mm. I said that uh, in, in my definition of first, I think that not only is he first, but he's first in rank, but he's also foundational. Mm. And the principle of being a, of having a foundation, you need to know you can't build a superstructure if you don't have a right foundation. My God. So, so why don't we, why don't we try to uh, take a look and uh, hopefully we'll look at Luke chapter, um, no, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 kind of gives us what I need. So when we're talking about teach me so I can have a heart of wisdom, we need the word of God to teach us, study, to show thyself, approve unto God. What my need not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is, and is, and is, and is worthy of doctrine and proof, reproof and for correction that the man of God, the woman of God, might be thoroughly furnished unto every good word. But it can't happen if he's not first. I got some engineers in the house, and I, of course, if they're going to build a building, they don't start with the roof. I want to try it one more time. I said, I think I have some engineers in the house. They don't, they don't start with the roof. <laughs> they don't even start with the walls. Yeah. Where do they begin? Uh, what? So, look at your neighbor and say, being, him being number one is foundational. You can't get the deep things of God until you got the foundational part. Amen. Lord have mercy. Don't, uh, excuse me, I, I, I feel a, I feel a, I feel a, I feel the anointing coming now. You, 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 how you gonna build walls when you don't have no foundation? How you gonna have the protection of a roof when you don't have walls in order to put the foundation on it? I mean, put the walls on the foundation. You gotta have a foundation. Look at your neighbor and say, you gotta have a foundation. And your foundation is this. He's got to be first. Oh, my God. 
Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me, I, I hear the apostle Paul talking to me. Uh, I, I hear him talking to me. And let me see if I can't find some. First Corinthians chapter 3. Good Lord, have mercy. Let me, I, it wasn't even on my notes, but I just got to say that because some of us want to go deep and we don't even have a foundation. We want a word from the Lord and haven't even got the first word. He is first. Somebody else say, he is first. God, have mercy. Look, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, around about, uh, uh, let me see, let me, verse 7. No, 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 verse 6 says this in 1 Corinthians. You don't even have it, I'm just saying it. He says, I have planted, Apollos uh, uh, watered, but God gives the increase. So then neither is he that planteth any, anything, neither is he that watereth, but what? God, what? That giveth the increase. Now verse 8 says, now he that planteth and he that watereth is one. And every man shall receive of his own reward according to his own labor. Hmm. Verse 9 says, For we are labors together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's what? Building. Oh, I'm preaching here. You are God's building. My God. Uh, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, Paul says, as a wise, what? Master builder, I have laid the foundation. And another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed. Everybody say that, take heed. How you build. You got to watch how you build on the foundation. First, you got to get the foundation, and then you got to be careful about how you build. Are you hearing what I say? Because you are God's building, and you got to be careful about how you build on the foundation. God, I feel like preaching now. Yes, I do. You are His building, and once you get the foundation right, then you're ready for the wall. I didn't even go to the, to the top part of that, uh, that chapter. See, Paul says, you know, I can't talk to you all like mature people because you're still drinking milk. No, in order for you to eat meat, you got to have a good foundation. In order for you to go to the deep things of God, you got to have a foundation. You got to have a passion for him. You got to have a love for him. You got to let him build a foundation in your life so you can build a superstructure in your life. I, I, I think I gave this illustration a, a long time ago, and I wanna, it's, it's worthy for right now. There was a, 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 a as a matter of fact, this was a, 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 a rich man. This man was very rich, and he, he, he contracted this fella to build a, a house for him. He said, uh, he said, what I want you to do is, is build me a house and spare no pains in building the house. Uh, the fellow built the house, uh, and uh, the fellow was trying to be a little bit shoddy, so what he did was started using inferior material in the house. Uh, uh, the foundation wasn't right. The walls were not right. He used uh, uh, materials, uh, the electrical stuff was just not right. I mean, he just, I mean, when he got finished with it, the house was looking really good. And when the rich man finished with the, uh, when the rich man knew that the house was finished and the builder came to give him the keys to the house, the rich man said, no, I really appreciate you building the house, but I really want you to have it. <laughs> now, if he had built the house right, the man would have had the keys to a wonderfully built house, but he tried to cut corners. Beloved, let me tell you, what's the illustration? It means that the Lord has given you a foundation, but you don't take care on how you build on the house, on the foundation. And what he's got is giving you the keys to your house, and it's your house, you're going to live in it. So that way you build your house. It's the house you're going to have to live in. Whatever material you put in your house, you're going to have to live in your house. Oh. Let me, let me come to a conclusion here. Yeah, let me come to a conclusion here. Because, see, in Matthew chapter 7, the same story is there. Here's what it says. It says there, it says, Therefore, whosoever, watch this, he says in Matthew, heareth. I'm still talking about teach me to number my days because I don't have long to live here. Jesus says, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, 
Jesus said, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Do you remember when I said when Moses prayed that the word first had to do with foundation? The first principle, number one. Jesus says, I'm going to show you the man who hears my words, who lets me teach them, them and they do them. He said, I'm going to liken that man unto a wise man who builds his house on a rock. Listen to Jesus. Jesus says, I will liken him as a man who understood skill for living. What is that? Wisdom. Skill for living. He who hears and does what I say will build his life, his house, upon a rock, a firm foundation. Why? Because, because the storm of life are certain. It's coming. We can praise him today for what's going to be happening, all the opportunities, but let me tell you, things going to come. Uh, you, you, we can't get around it. It's going to come. But what are you putting in your house? What kind of material are you putting in your house? You are the captain of your own. You are your own project manager. <laughs> that just came to me. You are your own project manager. Now, what quality of material do you want in your house? Because know this, you're going to have to live in your house. Matthew 7, 25 says, and, and, and the rain will descend and the flood will come and the winds will blow and beat upon that house. But the life that's built wisely, it will stand. Oh, am I making any sense this morning? Uh, uh, the question, uh, 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 why? Because if that life was founded upon a rock, it's on a firm foundation because you are taking time to put right material in your house. Uh, talking to my grandson the other day, and, and, and we, 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 I, I, I was talking about something we did. He, he, he said, I said, how'd it go? He said, everything was wonderful. It was just too long. I said, okay. It was just nicely done. He said, but it was just too long. I said, you know what? Uh, I said, you know what? You can push a button, but you can't push a button and get character. You can go on the internet all you feel like it, but you can't go on the internet and get character. Come on. You can twit all you feel like it, but you can't twit character. You can Facebook all day long and it will never produce character. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, it takes time to build character. You can't get instant character. No, you got to go through some stuff. You got to pray a little while. You got to have some failure in your life. You got to spend time with the Lord to get character in your life. What you're building in your house. See, you got to go and inspect the material before you put it in your house. Am I saying anything to you? You got to be sure that what you're putting in your house is high quality. Yeah, some things, sometimes you got to go dig for some good stone because that's what I like on the outside of my house. I don't just like walls with wood on it. I like stone on my house. So, so why, why, why is it important? Because one of these days the storm won't come. So Jesus also says uh, there is a person who does not understand skill for living. Hmm. Matthew 7, 26 says, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doth not do them shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I got to hurry up. I, I didn't mean to take this long. Uh, uh, and I love this technology. I'm, 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 I'm automating myself now. I'm doing more than okay now. I'm saying thank you. And, and, you know, and, and when we got we to gotta step into this technology, but understand there are some things you just can't uh, throw away. I mean, I mean, with every advancement and technology brings, there are some things you just can't throw away. And one thing Jesus said, you got to spend time with me. She said, if you spend time with you, I'll reveal my secrets to you. Oh. 
He says, but there is a wise man, but there's also a foolish man. And I think that this generation is foolish because the technology has become the God. And you're replacing the number one for something that's less of value. When you love him, you take time to build in your house because you want to live in that house. Because the day is going to come when you will have to get an account for what material you put in your house. You don't want to be saved just by fire. You want to just get there. You want to have rewards when you get there. Let me hurry up. I'm finished now. Let me hurry up. He says there's a wise man and there's a foolish person. That's the one who wants to be real fast. They want to do it real quick. They, want to, they just want to have a house. They built their house on sand. So what's the difference between the wise builder and the foolish builder? Here's the difference. Oh, the one that is wise, uh, the other is foolish. The one takes time to build. Say, I need to take time to build. Yeah. Now, if I want to be foolish, I'm going to do it what? Quickly. Mm. Watch this. One thing is absolutely constant for both of them. Here it is. The storm is coming. Ah. No matter how you look at it, the storm is coming. You can do it quickly. Wasn't that used to be when we were children, you know, the three little piggies and something about blow your house down and all that other business? You remember that? I'm a huffer and I'm a puffer and blow you. Well, when you build it on a rock, you can huff and puff all you want to. My house will still stand. Make it quick and we huff and puff and your house is coming down. And now the enemy has access to you and your family. It takes time to build your house. One's wise, one's foolish. Which one are you? Enjoy the technology, but something you got to take time for. You got to take time to pray. You got to take time to study. You got to take time to worship. Because in the process, you're building character. Don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you. Uh. I'm concluding. I know you've heard this over and over again, and I couldn't think of anything else to say but this for you, from my heart to yours. And as I grow in wisdom, I pray that you will as well teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart to wisdom um, sons and daughters my beloveds do not forget the law or my teaching let your heart keep my commandments Proverbs 3 don't allow yourself to be drifting away with this quick world and forget his commandments. Because length of days and years of life worth living, tranquil inward and outward continuing through old age will happen when you don't let those things slip. I can't live it for you. You got to live it for yourself. And the person next to you cannot live it for you. You got to decide that I'm going to put quality material in my building because I am God's building. My beloveds, my brothers, my, my sons and my daughters, uh, uh, let not mercy and kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them about your neck and write them upon the table of your heart. My sons and my daughters, you shall find favor, grace with God and man. Don't let them slip. You will find favor and you will find good understanding. You will find high esteem in the sight and in the judgment of God and man. 
my sons and my daughters, here we are. Lean on, trust in, put the weight of your life and be confident in the Lord. And don't lean to your own understanding. I want you to put the weight of your life uh, on him and trust him. Be confident in the Lord with all your heart and your mind and your soul and your emotions. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart for skill for living in all your ways. When the storm comes, Acknowledge him in all your ways. When the sickness comes, acknowledge him. In all your ways, when your children are not doing what they ought to do, uh, say, for this I have Jesus. In all your ways, acknowledge him and know and recognize and acknowledge him. And he will, oh, saints of God, he will direct your path. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Ah. He'll direct your path. And here's what you'll find. You shall be in health. Your nerves and your sinews and your marrow, and there'll be moisture in your bones. You will learn how to honor the Lord, and you will capitalize on all the benefits that God has because you're building in your house, good material. So when the storm comes, and when the storm is over, you'll still be standing. All oh, beloved, the law of first things in everything make him first. I'm not finished, I'm quitting. But before I quit on your feet, I said, before I quit on your feet, repeat after me, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, regardless of what's going on in my life. In 2014, I got a firm foundation. I'm building my life on a rock, the rock of salvation. Now give the Lord a praise that's worthy of his wonderful name. Don't play with it. If he's number one, don't worry about your neighbor. Give the Lord a praise that's worthy of his number name. Bless God. I will bless him. I will bless him. I will bless him. I will acknowledge him in all of my ways and he will direct my path. I'm going to put good material in my building because I got to live in it.